Hello friends, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. In today's video, I am going to talk about some commonly used Lean Six Sigma tools. The commonly used Lean Six Sigma tools are Fishbone, Pareto Chart, Muda, 5S and Control Charts. There are so many tools that are used in Lean Six Sigma, but these are the five commonly used tools. So you will find their application in every Lean Six Sigma project. The first tool is Fishbone Diagram. Fishbone Diagram identifies many possible causes for an effect or a problem. It can be used to structure a brainstorming session. It immediately sorts ideas into useful categories. So this is the basic definition of a Fishbone Diagram. So this tool was introduced way back in 1940s. And this has been serving the industry since then. It's a very helpful tool. As it has already said, it helps you identify the possible causes of an effect or a problem. It also helps you structure the brainstorming session. So for example, you are in a brainstorming session and you don't know how to start. But if you draw the fishbone diagram on the board and then you start asking questions, your brainstorming session will be a success. So it's a very helpful tool. And it also helps you immediately sort these ideas into useful categories. So let's see how a fishbone diagram looks like. You see the head of the fish is called the effect or the problem. So you write down your problem or the effect at the head of the fish. So we have six particular broad heads under which all the causes are categorized. Manpower, machine, material, method, mother nature and measurements. So as it is said in the definition, if you see you can immediately sort your ideas into these different categories. I have detailed video on my channel for all of these Lean Six Sigma tools. I will attach the link of these videos in the description box below. The second tool is Pareto chart. So fishbone diagram is when you do not have any data or information about the project and when you have data in the project then you can use Pareto chart to identify the solutions to the problem or analyze the data first and identify the real root causes to the problem. Pareto chart works on Pareto principle which is also known as 80-20 rule which means the Pareto principle states that for many events roughly 80% of the effect comes from 20% of the causes. What does this mean? It means that all the process problems which are contributing 80% to the overall effect are caused by the 20% causes only. So let's understand the use of Pareto. So during any quality project or Six Sigma or Lean Six Sigma project, the intention of the project lead is to identify and work on those minimum causes which can maximum impact the project goal. Pareto chart helps Six Sigma professionals to identify those top 20% causes. This is how a Pareto chart looks like. On the left hand side you will see the count of errors are there and on the right hand side you will see percentage contribution of these errors. You can also look at the bottom part of the graph which says that cumulative percentage. Which means 41.3% of the errors are contributed by print error type. And if you include the second error type which is spelling mistake, both of them will contribute to 81% of the total errors. So it means if we work on these two error types, we will be able to handle 81% of the project problem. So now if a team leader has to create a training plan, he will create a training plan for print and spelling mistakes only. He will be able to cover 81% of the problem. He will not create the training plan for the entire error types. As I said, the link of these detailed videos will be attached in the description box. The next Lean Six Sigma tool is Muda. So Muda is a traditional Japanese term for an activity that is wasteful. Muda actually means waste. So what we have to do is identify what are the different types of waste which exist in a process and we need to try and eliminate those waste. There are eight types of waste which exist. Number one is transportation. Number two is inventory. Number three is motion. Number four is waiting waste. Number five is overproduction. Number 6 is overprocessing, number 7 is defects, and number 8 is intellect. Transportation is unnecessary movement of the products. Inventory waste is when you have excess inventory or you have no inventory to work. Motion is unnecessary movement of human beings. Waiting is also a waste. 
waiting for a product waiting for a service is a waste of time over production when we have required only 100 we produce 110 which is over production so over production is mother of all the waste over processing if you require to paint a door two times and you do it three times it is over processing defects any product or service which is not meeting customer specification is a defect and waste of intellect for example you are using a lathe machine just for grinding or you are using a laptop only as a calculator that is again one of the wastes moving on to the next lean six sigma tool which is 5s i have seen great application of 5s in services as well as in manufacturing industry so 5s is the name of a workplace organization methodology the mantra of 5s is place for everything and everything in its place 5s stands for sort set in order shine standardize and sustain when we say sort means whatever is not needed remove set things in order is the second step third step is to clean things and put them in order shine and put them in order the fourth is standardize standardize this is as a process and fifth is sustain so you have to sustain the first four step so that the process remains smooth so that the problem doesn't occur again so you can see the application of 5s in so many areas at the chemist shop so they have sorted everything they have labeled everything and they have arranged boxes as per the alphabetical order and then they keep it clean and they made it a standard process whenever a new medicine comes in they put it in the desired box so you can see application of 5s mantra in the chemist shop place for everything and everything in its place the last tool that I'm, that we are going to discuss today is control chart a control chart is a graph that is used to study how a process changes over time important and very useful tool used in all the lean six sigma projects always has the central line for an average an upper line for the upper control limit and a lower line for the lower control limit so we can call it a time series plot with control limits these control limits are plus minus 3 standard deviation from the central line this is how a control chart looks like you can see this is the average line which is the green line in the center there is a line which is called upper control limit which is plus 3 sigma from the center and there is another line which is lower control limit which is minus 3 sigma from the center all these dots which are here this is the process performance over time so the thumb rule is no point should go out of the control limit so it is a huge topic it cannot be covered in such short time so so what i'll do is i'll attach the link of the detailed videos in the description box here for your reference so friends i hope you like this video if you really like this video please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends I'll see you in my next upcoming video till then take care bye bye